Hello everyone, my name is Drew Matt, your local Tilia OTP and today I want to do a full guide on how to play Tilia top lane, not jungler or jungle or mid where she right now is. So, I'm going to break this down into multiple sections. I'm going to talk about summoner spells, items, masteries, uh, ban phase, early game, mid game and late game and I'm going to try to specify why I think this uh, guide is useful and why I play it like this right now. I might be the only Tulia top player that actually, I don't know, tries it more than 10 games. Uh, currently I have a 78 win rate on Platinum 3 on Europe West with a 5k DA almost in about 30 games, which is pretty okay. Now, this is for credentials. If you want to see more, you can check op.gg where you can see uh, besides the builds and such, um, you can see some statistics for every game and you'll understand why I think this champion might work top lane. Now, you might say, yeah, but you're in the team comp. Yes, I do. And also, I try to make it up for it in terms of uh, damage and engage potential. Why is that? Because normally when you play Talia mid, you're going to have that uh, that engage. You're going to have that wall. You're going to do a wall in team fights, and you want you'll want to we someone. But when you do that, there isn't going to be follow up. From a mid laner that has burst. In our case, if we ult and WEQ combo on someone, preferably their carry, then our mid laner can have the follow up and can come and help us to actually win the team fight. Now, you want to ask me now why wouldn't I play it jungle better than top? Well, that's a choice because when you play jungle, you are you're susceptible to. Uh, invades to other junglers to a lot of annoying factors you might not be as strong and farmed as you are on top lane when you can farm more there are a lot of reasons but right now this guide is meant for the mid to lia players mostly that really enjoyed her in the past and feel that right now it's not that she's not that strong i'm slowing the video down because i really want to go through the introduction phase and uh, i don't really know uh Actually, I'll let this go on and I'll just talk. So yeah, you should try this in draft and blind picks with the specifications I make. And you will might find actual success success with this as I did. Uh, I think you should try at least once. And if you think it's not for you as a mid lane Tulia player, then or even jungler, then you should not. Uh, if you don't like it, it's fine. Anyway, let's start to the guide because we also we also wasted so much time on that introduction. We're interested in summoner spells for ignite most of the time because we want to get kill on lane and apply as much pressure as possible. We're interested in some runes that maximizes damage and sustain, which will be electrocute with the heal runes and also time warp tonic with biscuit. Why is that? That is because we do not start with Corrupting Potion, we start with Doran's Ring for more damage and, um, and survivability on lane. Usually, when you play with Ignite, you'll want to go for the kill and you won't get, uh, you won't get out sustained unless he teleports back. Now, the plan is to kill the opponent before he teleports or to play as safe as is necessary so that you don't waste your mana and resources from the Biscuits on unnecessary stuff so you gotta you know you gotta create a balance now you can start corrupting potion as well but i found more success with this build what was the next factory we talked about rose yeah we have items exactly items we start with dorance into potions and we sustain off the four biscuits that we get you can also start with corrupting but i'd suggest going for just the dorance and go straight to ludens the next item obviously is the one that i just said ludens and uh, after that, you might finish Stork Boots, you might get the first part of Morello, but one key important item for mid to late game fight is the stopwatch. That turns into Ozonia when it's used, but exactly the best item you need in those 
fights from mid to late because again you do not have a top lane tank and you want to engage and while I recommend to pick Talia top in most games there are some cases in which your team has an AMI support an Idali jungler and a Syndra mid and there is no tank in the team so in very few cases Talia top is not recommended but as a let's try this thingy uh, if you think you might have success and you don't really like her on mid uh, yeah, I'm going to back to go back for this one. So we talked items, we talked runes. I want to talk the ban phase as well. You'll see here I get the kill. I'm going to come back to this scene. Don't ask what this guy does. Uh, in the ban phase, you don't really want Akali or Irelia on their team. You want them in yours, you don't want on theirs. So ban those champions because they are pretty annoying to fight. And besides that, I find only Darius a hard lane, but most lanes are actually quite interesting if you play smart and you should you should have the advantage if you play as I suggest. Now I'm going to scroll back here because I've let you on a half speed for like half an hour and I know you hate me but it's okay. In the early game we want to do this, we want to do the full QWE combo with Ignite and then if we succeed we want to further make that advantage bigger. Now, always keep word here or here. I've seen you failing that jump. Always keep zones worth it because you are going to get ganked. Not necessarily camp. If you are camped, there is a problem. But if you are ganked and you know how to manage yourself, you'll be just fine. Here I notice that my jungler comes. I put the E down. She won't jump through the E right now because I don't know. She dodges the Q. If she didn't dodge the Q, she would have been dead. Here I put the W under me because I know I can create some distance. And here I'll just go back. As you can see, I have flash up in this fight. I have flash up. And I also see Ramus coming. I could have just flash wanted to escape, but now I wanted the kill. Here, obviously, she might flash. But she, she doesn't see the ball that it's right there, the Ramus. And I got the kill right there. Here, Jax actually dodges my attacks he could jump on me here but i see he this he does not but that's still fine so early game we're interested in multiple things i don't know how many i will say so that's why i'm saying that one of them would be poking from the minion wave towards the enemy champion hitting him with auto attacks without getting all the aggro you just have to position in the middle of the lane because behind somehow your minions when he goes for the melees you'll get it right and going for full Q's poke on the enemy champion while he's at at least half percent HP after some annoying poke uh, or if after he used his TP and you did the second uh, poke round to get him there you can go for WEQ ignite combo if your mana still allows it's much more easier to actually press that combo and succeed it against a top laner than against a mid laner because, even as even against another jungler, because, because they are forced to go towards the minions, as you can see here in this zone, and that creates a massive disadvantage, because your range and he's a melee, you can, you know, get something out of that. You'll suck against more mobile champions, but against uh, some champions you will have extreme advantages if you play your cards right. I don't want to make any promises, okay? I know... I am a bit higher elo on a Rob Nordicanist than Platinum Trio on Vest, but still, judging by my performance and my KDA in 30 games, I'm going to say that I can actually make this work even in higher elos, and I will probably play it for some time from now on, and you can check this op.gg. And one more thing that I mentioned once, but didn't specify again is that you have to keep your lane worth it you will win two versus twos if your jungler is at least a decent early game jungler so no shivana okay extreme cases no extreme cases but with two versus twos with ignite you should most of the time win especially if the jungler has a cc spell so you can trigger the w eq combo instantly uh again you can see i bought vision word here i put it down i want to track somehow the nidalee she does not expect a vision word there when she'll come. But I know I have the safe zone now. Okay, I know I have the kill, I have the flash up, I have everything. I can just go ramming at that, um, at that uh, Jax. And 
This, in your opinion, might be a bad player, but we, sh we should still consider that he's a platinum tree and not a complete boosted person or something. And he might just have a bad day, whatever. You can do this thing and uh, you can get the kills that I get in this game in many games if you try to play smart and if you know your core strengths and weaknesses. Now, this is the lane phase. You're interested in farming, wording, playing safe macro, being smart of where the enemy jungle is, so no stupid diving, no going too deep. If your jungler comes and tries to ruin your lane, his problem, but you gotta play with him, not against him. So go for the poke as much as you can and farm and try to scale towards the mid game, try to get your Ludens. After Ludens, with Electrocute, you're going to get a lot of damage actually done and you might one shot people even and that's one of another one of the strengths i've had yesterday or some days ago for when you see the video i had a game where i went 211 or something but my damage was still more almost i don't know more than 25 percent or 35 percent of the enemy top laner which i fed i had i've been hard camp but my team actually won that now this uh, these cases are rare and i was extremely tired so it's explainable it's explained that's no, I don't think that's a word. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, another thing you're interested in is going for the alt at level six if you see fit. If you see a possibility, why not? Go for it. Now here obviously Rhea is going to die. But this Zed might escape here without the Talia that chases. So yeah, Ramus might not solo kill Zed here, okay? Okay, maybe he might have, but we're not completely sure and some follow up might have come, but with these roams, with these things, you, you're practically a pantheon on top lane that somehow scales more better, scales extremely better, more, ah, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, you know, you are better late game than a pantheon. I guarantee you are better late than a pantheon. I fucked up that there. But the mistake is on his side. Because once you get the advantage, most of the top laners won't have any clue how to play against you now. Here the flash is up for him in two seconds, but he won't have time for that. It, uh, so yeah, you're practically a better pantheon on top lane with annoying poke, with annoying ults. Worse ults globally, but better anything else. And while the top laners... Enemy top laners might go for full magic resist titans, going Ludens and Void stuff and Morello late game will scale towards and sword boots. We'll, we'll kind of go through that as only the top laner will mostly go for the magic resist. I've never, I didn't see it in the past, I don't know, so much time. I see all the ADCs not going for magic resist and all the mid laners and all the junglers. So basically just the top lane might be the problem, but you're not forced to actually fight him, you can push as much as you want, you can go mid, you can go towards the crabs, you can create a pressure zone actually in the top lane, you can be there, and you just have to play smart and safe, you just have to stay at a certain distance, like you don't go here, if you have no words, you, you stay somewhere around here, if you don't have a word, they might dive you right there, you know, you gotta play to your strength, you gotta know when they are coming from where you gotta split, be smart about it. Obviously as a Talia you can get camped, but if you play smart and you know that you're risk to die and when, you're going very well up and you're going to climb if you follow these steps. And again, as you can see in the build here, I'm going I 4 0 not that much farm ahead, but going good in kills. I missed a lot of CS in this. I uh, was a bit tired as well. Good. So early game, you've understood, right? You, what you what do you need to do? Answer it. Kill Jack. No, no, not that. Early game, you want to actually try to get some advantage, and if it's not possible, just farm and wait for the mid game where you engage. You don't need a tank necessarily, but you prefer at least an off tank or a bruiser in your team or a support in your team, someone that can eat up some damage, not all of it, because obviously with Nami and Tristana and Italy. So jungle and such in the mid lane or that squishy yeah, obviously that's hard but even if you get an assassin on mid lane that's enough a diana a trash at least any tank support any bruiser jungler besides evelyn and nidalee the any jungler is good so yeah you get the point here there are a lot of strength a lot of clear strengths for this thing and you can see by the way the q heal 
I did a Q and look at the plus 20 that heals me. This is actually the rune that gives the heal and that sustain is amazing on the lane phase later on. Moving on, scaling towards the mid game, the lane phase will be a bit longer but as you can see here I always buy vision wards, always try to keep the push up, I know Jax will ward, he will teleport. Uh, there is nothing fancy here, just trying to maximize the damage dealt towards that Jax. Now, you're interested in the items, in the third item you're always interested in something called Zonias and go for it as much as you can because that's your main tool of survival and your main tool of engage. And I'm saying it over and over again because I feel that this champion is useless without Zonia. <laughs> so you gotta, you know, try it at least. And again, Ludens, Sork Boots, Stopwatch, uh, parts of Morello or either full Zonia, just keep it, keep the active as, most, as much as you can have it ready, you know. Now, you're going to notice, you might be bored by this, but this is just a practical lane phase in which I just farm and try to go for the crabs, try to kill him as much as I can. And I'm going to scroll it towards better things. Another kill here in the free tower. Here at this point you can see the score, I'm 5-0. Practically my team would be in a disadvantage without me right now and without Ramos that helped. But here we can get the free tower or soon enough. Nidalee tries to gank, but as you can see, you are invincible towards the jungle ganks if you get a bit ahead. You're susceptible only to hard CC and burst, but top laners doesn't don't really have that. They are more mid laners have that. Top laners are more like ah, unless they are fed. And you have W to escape as well. This is one of the major some major things, okay, Q to poke, W, E to either engage or escape, they are forced to go into the melee range, that's why I feel this pick might be viable, that's why I'm preaching it, that's why I'm trying to convince you, my lovely friends, uh, you get the point, okay, I'm trying I'm trying to make it uh, work, and I think I'm onto something, even though it might look foolish, even though in the champ select they will say, okay, but how that works, You'll show them how, that, how it works if you had at least one, two good ranked games in the past on Talia. And if you are a mid lane Talia player and you play decent with a, with a decent win rate, we, you will succeed here too. You should try this actually. Uh, and if you do, please, uh, please uh, reach me anywhere you'd like and tell me how it went. Because, because I don't know, I feel I'm onto something with this and I'll probably keep playing top lane Talia for some time. Anyway. Back to the actual guide, not to the convincing part here, I don't know. This guy actually pretty much trolls at this point and he flashed, I flashed to counter that flash, got the kill. Moving extremely faster, got another flank here. She might have killed the Rayla, she might have escaped or might not, but I've been there to help. Moving extremely faster now, it's interesting now. At this point I know Jax might take my top tower, but I'm really not interested in that, I'm interested in gaining advantages in other places, okay, such as this lovely bot lane. And while this was a pretty bad, that was a weird flash from so while this was a pretty bad uh, roam, uh, it's not over yet and I actually get something from it. Because as you can see here, Yasuo engaged, so I was still there, and what I did here is that I kept two members of their team in this zone, while Yasuo was fighting these two. Now you'll see that Yasuo actually dies against Tristana, even though it doesn't look like. And here I just YOLO around, I just keep it as light as I can. I try to ignite Nidalee to make her go back. And she will go back because I have the full combo ready in like, no, 7 seconds. But I have a Q, okay, I have a Q and E and that's more than enough to actually kill her. And she realizes that right now and she will just back off because in th she will just jump into my E at this point. If you want, that was very close to get the kill, by the way. And moving faster. That was a pretty okay team fight. I noticed that Irelia and the crab. I noticed that Irelia killed uh, Zed, so we just get the free tower in trade for the top lane tower. And this is not all. I actually go for the kill there on top lane tower. I've actually seen, didn't see Jax here. I went for the farm, but somehow Ramos caught him, seen him, and I was, I was like, okay, I'll take the kill. And just a simple taunt and full damage, there you go. Now, this is a good jungler. 
Sometimes you won't get jungler herb and you might get camped. In that scenario, you have to stick under the tower because you have the kill potential. If you if you do your combo right when you get dived, you have the kill potential with ignite, and that's a lot. And while you're getting ganked and camped, your team might do something somewhere else. Don't get annoyed if your jungler doesn't help you. But tell him that two versus two you can win pretty okayish most of the fights if he's not a super late jungler such as Shivana or something. And that is because you play with Ignite and you have a Q that deals half HP of someone at level 1. As of latest changes. <laughs> and you don't really need the AoE Q compared to the past. You don't really need that right now. Look at the wall placement right here. You see this? I've actually caught him before I got uh, removed from non-combat state. And here it's just another simple kill. And I missed that. Uh, actually, I think he skips here, but advantage is that I get the tower. Look at the wave that I created while well, he has teleport. I don't think he thinks that I'm going to take the tower that fast. And that actually happens here. That I'm going to take the tower instantly while I put a vision ward there for my own safety. Uh, I feel that ward was wasted somehow, but it was worth Moreover, more uh, more crabs, take them as much as you can because you need them because they offer a huge gold boost and I really see a lot of junglers not going straight for it, I would after a certain point in the game, oh, 140 gold. When you are sure you can get the kill, go for it, but I recommend first poking the enemy down to half HP because bruisers in the melee range can be scary, so you don't go full Full dump on them like I did here, unless you are certainly sure that it works. Just wait a second. Thank you. Okay. Moving on after the early phase, which is 20 minutes by now, you'll want to have some late game. You'll want to have some mid game to late game, and you'll want to farm a lot to do an engage with your ult and such. I don't think I have any good engage ults in this game, but it's still pretty good example. Pretty easy to teach example, judging by how the things went. And this game was one of many that I did this. I don't, uh, I don't feel that this is hard to do to have a how much eight zero two score in minute twenty. But most people want into like maybe this Yasuo did, and they will play safer. Okay, so here I grid a bit. I go towards their jungle, but I escape because I have that plant and treasures also coming. But I will soon die because I still greet another crab. You should count the crabs that I got this game, by the way. That's the presence on the mid lane, on the top lane, sorry. Still have the vibes. Here I go push. I will probably soon have my death. My only death for this game right about here because I get caught and I flash badly. You'll see what I'm saying. Uh, right here. I failed the wall, the melee wall. I failed the flash. That was a lot. Should have at least kept Yasuo out of that whole range. And that would have been maybe a kill on someone. I don't know if the escape would be here plausible. It wouldn't be. But yeah, you get the point. Moving extremely faster because you don't want to see the respawn page. And I really don't think anything else is important. I see a long fight on bot lane as well. And I move towards it. I need to gain advantage there. And they are might they might or might not expect me. And I don't really care much and just go in at this point because I know we have the huge advantage that we've generated over time. Getting the kill on Nidalee, Zed will jump on Tristana, we will kill instantly the Zed. Jax teleported behind us or just went for it, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Uh, another kill, Trash is playing pretty good by the way. And from here you can realize that the game is long over and gone and finished. But you get the point. You are faster than the enemy top laner on some places. You play smarter than them. You try to not get killed in lane phase by the enemy top laner or by the enemy top laner and the jungler. You're one of the strongest actually top laners as in the mage. If you calculate, if you calculate it, there aren't many players, there aren't many champions in the game that can output five percent, fifty percent of the enemy AP in one Q. So fifty D, not 15, okay. So yeah, you're pretty strong at least, so you gotta abuse that. You gotta 
play to your strengths because more normally on mid lane is now very hard to actually get the kill because you can't do any Q on the enemy champion because it's way easier on mid lane. I do a bad ult here. It's way easier on mid lane to dodge the Q from Talia. Why? Because there is a minion wave on the entire length of the map while you can do some WEs. Uh, it's not that effective and you are more susceptible to ganks on mid probably than on top. That sounds that sounds impossible to some, but I feel it's like that. There are two sides from which you can get, get you can get ganked. And you can ward only one side on top and you're good to go. So it's more simple, it's you know. Even though some players might not say that. Here I waste my WE on that, but we finally catch up to that Z. And from here is just a phase roll game with everyone stomping. Uh, you got the main points from this video, you understood what I said. All you gotta do is have a decent lane phase, so you can transition to mid game, to late game, to ult better, to do some good ults, either at barons, dragons or simple teamfights. Most people don't expect you flying towards them with an ult and then simply WEQ combo them instantly and killing them. They don't expect that, they don't know that, they don't even know what Talia is because she has such a small play rate at this point. Yes, on jungle she's probably the best right now, I don't deny that, but for us laners, which actually hated that, which actually hated jungle, and we never wanted Talia to be a jungler, for us, I recommend you to try Talia top lane. As I did, and as I will probably keep doing the slow motion, slow motion explosions. There you go. Call Michael Bay. Uh, so, that would be about it for now. I really hope this was an educative video. I don't know that word exactly. But still, <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed what I've said here. I really hope I did not troll you. If someone says you trolls, please show them one of your games in which you rock. If you have a decent grenade with Talia, either jungle or mid, you can try her top lane, not in ranks directly, but in a blind or even if ranks, if you try, you have to you have to first study this video pretty well if you want to jump straight into ranks because there are some small things that if you understand how to make them, they will help you and if you don't, you are on a path to destruction and feed because you are a target for getting camped if you don't work properly at level 2-3 when you expect the enemy jungler to be nearby you on any side because most of junglers start red versus blue you know so they are naturally flowing towards top lane in most cases you are also susceptible to level 2 ganks from some crazy gangers such as Camille and such so you gotta play you know you gotta watch and study the matchups and then you gotta try to work on it that's my mini guide for now uh, if someone got if someone got some good advice from this, please tell me. And if you liked it, please leave a share, or subscribe, whatever you want. I, I would do thoughts and opinions on this. I really hope you enjoyed my vi my videos, and I really hope I don't suck doing them. And thanks for watching, and have a nice day, night, evening, whatever else. And see you next time, guys. And you can try this, I know, you can, you can try this. See you next time guys, and thank you, goodbye.